Hi, uh, my name is Brian Jackson. Uh, today I'll be talking about some of the adventures I've had in Julia over the last year in avoiding allocations. So as a kind of brief motivation and background for this talk, the last year at uh, JuliaCon I gave a talk on trajectory optimization.dl. Over the kind of the following months after JuliaCon, I spent some time getting uh, optimizing my code for performance and particularly on allocations and achieved my goal of getting about a 100x improvement in runtime and zero allocations. Uh, so really this talk is just kind of a compilation, a very brief compilation of some of the tips and tricks that I learned uh, through that process that I hope uh, some of you will find useful as you're trying to optimize your own code. So as kind of a motivating example, uh, we're just going to build up a very simple neural network of a, very, of a couple of fully connected layers just to kind of illustrate some of the ideas that I'll be sharing. So to start off, we're going to create like an abstract layer and then we're going to instantiate that with a fully connected layer, which in reality is just a matrix and a vector that we're going to store and instruct. And then we're, we're going to compute the so-called activation function, which is really just multiplying the input by the matrix, adding the constant bias term, and passing it through in nonlinearity. Which brings us to my first tip. So this is really my first tip for anyone kind of trying to get performance out of Julia, is to use the static arrays.jl package. For me, this is one of the, the core uh, tools in the Julia ecosystem. As a brief overview of the types available in this package, we have the standard S array. This is pretty much pretty much what most people use when they're using static arrays. Uh, these are limited to about 14 by 14 dimensional arrays. Uh, they're allocated on the stack. They're immutable, and because of that, they're very very fast, and you can use kind of normal, uh, natural uh, syntax for doing matrix multiplication. Their mutable counterpart are allocated on the heap. On the heap, they're the M arrays. Uh, obviously they're mutable, like I said, and in order to ensure that you don't have any allocations when you're using these, you want to use the in-place matrix multiplication function. So the other one that's kind of hidden in there, not a whole, I haven't seen used a whole lot, not really talked about, is the sized array, which is really just a wrapper around the regular Julia array. So this doesn't have the same size restrictions as the other two, and for that reason it can be very beneficial, and this is what we actually ended up using in our code base. So as a kind of brief, uh, Performance compar comparison for that activation function, two slides previous. Uh, for normal Julia arrays, we get these results. And if we switch to S arrays, it basically does it in constant time because it's all living in the cache and, the, on, and on the stack, and it just it's just amazing how fast it is. We switch to the mutable version, again, way faster, no allocations. Uh, and it's just um, for medium-sized problems, this is really the way you want to go. But uh, if your matrices end up getting large, you can run into very significant time, uh, problems with compilation time. So here we have a graph of kind of our input size or the matrix dimension. As that grows, even to relatively moderate numbers of 50 to 70 uh, on an edge, then your compilation time is already for this very simple activation function going up to 20, 30, and 40 seconds and growing exponentially. So this really became a bottleneck for us and we ended up having to rewrite a lot of our code um, once we started trying larger problems. To kind of sidestep this, our end solution was to use sized arrays, uh, which we could uh, and, and sometimes do convert to S arrays when the problems are small enough to get those performance benefits. But a lot of times we just use the in-place matrix multiplication, which uses the loop unrolling at small sizes uh, and just kind of scales naturally to using blasts at larger problem sizes. Also, as a quick side note, if you're using broadcasting, oftentimes that results in allocations, and you can avoid those allocations by just doing the loop yourself. And it's fast and doesn't allocate. So as a performance comparison, uh, for the in-place and not in-place, naturally uh, we're going to mop up the allocations with regular Julia arrays. With sized arrays, we get similar performance, a little bit worse. I think that's just uh, the characteristic of this particular problem. Uh, but in general, we found sized arrays to kind of really nicely address this issue of kind of moving from small to medium to large size problems. So something worth that's worth looking into. Uh, second tip is to use function barriers. I know this is covered in the Julia performance manual, uh, but I think it's worth talking about a little bit more in detail. So if we actually build our neural network, we're invariably going to have something that looks like this. We're going to have a vector of abstract layers, and not all of our layers will be of the same type. Uh, for, so for those of you who are familiar with the Julia type system, this should be screaming red flags of type instability and poor performance. So we can actually sidestep those issues by using what we call a function barrier. So if we're going to compute the output of our neural network, we're going to end up looping over our layers. So 
does at the time of looping, uh, when we index into our, that abstract collection, we're gonna have a type instability. However, if we immediately pass that thing into a new function, that source of type instability will be eliminated uh, in the signature of the, uh, of the new function. And as long as that function doesn't return anything, we're gonna not gonna have any allocations and no impact on, on runtime performance. So this is a very nice uh, method uh, or technique that kind of simplifies some of our structures, particularly if you're using uh, static arrays and you have to store all of these type parameters for all of the, the sizes that you have in your, in your structs. Uh, a lot of times you can eliminate that by cleverly eliminating or having some uh, abstract types in your struct and then using function barriers to eliminate the allocations. We compare this to kind of the naive version where we compute them kind of back to back. <clears throat> we get a 5x improvement in runtime and eliminate all of the allocations. So my last tip of the day is kind of directed towards those of us who came from MATLAB or NumPy and we're used to kind of representing data as multi-dimensional arrays. And I found in Julia, really what you want to do is just use uh, kind of nested vectors or vectors of arrays uh, rather than increasing the dimension and doing slicing at runtime. So as an example, if we're trying to compute a lot of outputs for a lot of inputs of our neural network, uh, if we do this with a vector of vectors, the, the syntax ends up being really nice. It's just a single index. Uh, if we compare this to using a matrix, we have to end up doing the slicing at runtime. Or we can do uh, views, which are highly recommended if, instead of slicing. We uh, compare the performance on 1,000 vectors. The runtimes are really pretty similar. The vectors of vectors are the most performant, and they have zero allocations. Slicing obviously is not great at runtime because you're doing, uh, you're allocating memory. Uh, views, it looks like in 1.5 no longer allocate, which is awesome. Uh, this is a much needed feature. But even then, uh, you can oftentimes get around this by pre-allocating all the views that you'll need um, ahead of time, which is what we do in some cases. So some final kind of thoughts to wrap up. <clears throat> as far as actually doing this in practice, I used at time from Benchmark Tools to check performance and allocations just all over the place and just kind of w went from piece to piece and then slowly added on, uh, making sure my new code wasn't allocating. Uh, as far as a, like a high-level comment, I think Julia really needs better tools for understanding allocations and how to eliminate them. I can't count how many times I wanted to just give up and go back to C++ where I actually understood where was hap what was happening because at the end of the day, I found some things that worked to, to avoid allocations and couldn't really explain why those worked and why my other attempts uh, didn't work. Along those lines, I uh, need some improvements in at allocated whose results really don't uh, always match up with at B time, so it's hard to know like which one do we actually um, trust more. And definitely looking forward to the kind of allocation-centered uh, improvements in version 1.5 and beyond. Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk about this afterwards. Love to hear you guys' thoughts on how to improve um, performance and especially uh, handle and eliminate allocations in uh, time-critical code.